kick off. Uh, I am Ant-Man from Agoric Opco. Uh, super excited to have so many people here to listen in today. We've got an exciting, exciting lineup of people who are going to talk about our favorite word and our favorite topic, orchestration. Ooh, yeah. All right. Um, <clears throat> just to kick us off, I will, I'm going to quickly just go over what we're going to, uh, what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to give a quick update on, uh, on some stuff that we got coming up. Then uh, we'll have all of our speakers uh, introduce themselves and we'll dive into uh, some you know, dive into some questions. All right. Um, quick, uh, quick update on the Agoric side. Okay. Upgrade 16 is right around the corner, uh, which is going to introduce some really sweet upgrades that are going to make orchestration possible. I don't want to steal his thunder too much, uh, but Roland will talk about that later. Although I do like to steal a little bit of his thunder just to keep him honest um we also have abstract austin coming up alongside consensus if you're going to be in austin uh, we're super excited to be hosting uh co-hosting this event it's a chain abstraction day uh, we got some super awesome panels coming out um we'll make sure to drop a link to that on our social so be sure to check it out and uh, we've got some other workshops coming up in ankara and buenos aires uh, be sure to check out our events calendar if you want to take part in any of those all right let's dive in uh, my my timer is already going off for myself, so we're on track. Love it. Today, we're going to talk about orchestration and uh, chain abstraction. Many of us here are already familiar with chain abstraction and have heard about it. It's a pretty hot topic, especially uh, you know it, it, people uh, with ecosystems in the IBC uh, and connected uh, connected arenas. So, uh, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, uh, you know, chain abstraction broadly speaking, it's uh, it's a design principle that says users should not have to interact with their blockchains, especially when they're in the middle of doing stuff. You know, when you're trying to swap an asset to make sure that you can lock something up in a pool to get the most APY before everyone else locks up into it, you want that to happen quickly, easily, and seamlessly right we love that chain abstraction says in the middle of that you don't want to have to be switching your network several times just to get uh, you know from one asset to one pool um, and uh, specifically, we've got a host of speakers today who are going to be talking about orchestration. Now, orchestration is a software design principle that essentially says we want software bits to work together. We want that to be easy, and they should all help us accomplish a goal together. Um, but there's much smarter people who are going to explain what that means, how it works, and how it applies to, uh, to chain abstraction and why it's so important for Web3 right now. Um, with, so without further ado, um, guests and speakers, um, feel free, please, uh, in 30 seconds or less, introduce yourself, your project, and what your tie is to orchestration. So um, up first, the legendary Tabasco from Particle Network. What do you got for us? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the intro. Um, yeah, so I guess to, to quickly kind of introduce myself and introduce Particle Network, um, my name is Tabasco. It's not my real name, of course, though. My real name is um, is Ethan. I do develop relations here at Particle Network. So I handle all of our developer content, do uh, Twitter spaces like these, stuff like that. Um, and at Particle Network, we are building a layer one blockchain, a Cosmos blockchain, centered around the idea of the acquisition of chain abstraction. So we're kind of building a blockchain uh, centered around coordination and the settlement of transactions to essentially allow users to have one balance, one address across all chains through a mechanism that we call universal accounts. So sort of this idea of account-based chain abstraction attaching chain abstraction from um, the account level. So this is kind of what we're building at Particle Network. Um, historically, we've been very uh, kind of involved in the account abstraction space. And we're now kind of getting ready to release our chain abstraction solutions um, over the coming months. So that's the super high level TLDR of what we're building. Love it. That's amazing. So many good words and so many good ideas in that. Excited to hear what else you have to say. Um, and we have uh, Barry from Skip. Thank you so much for joining us. Your turn, 30 seconds or less. I will orchestrate people if uh, if we need to, to keep us on time. <laughs> Thanks, I'll be quick. Uh, I'm Barry, I'm one of the co-founders of Skip. We're building infrastructure to lay the foundation for the next generation of app chains. We operate mostly in the Cosmos space right now, and for us, orchestration and chain abstraction becomes really important because we're trying to tear down all of the barriers that exist between developers and launching their own sovereign integrated chains. And what that means is they need to be able to onboard users from anywhere to their chain. And we get really involved in chain orchestration in terms of trying to make that happen over a really complex tapestry of different bridges, indexes, and things in a way that, from the user's perspective, is just one interaction. Uh, and feels really easy and feels really simple. I love that. 
again, so many good ideas. We uh, really got, we have all the orchestration gigabrains on one call. I can feel the heat already. Uh, next up, VC, uh, share with us a little bit about Socket Net, uh, and what y'all are working on. Absolutely. Hey guys, this is VC. Uh, I lead tech product engineering here at Socket. I'm one of the co-founders. And Socket is the first chain abstraction protocol. What that really means is we build, we are building infrastructure that allows developer to build chain abstracted protocols on their end, right? So it's low level. And the way we do it is by leveraging something we call MOFA, which is a modular order flow auction, which allows users to delegate access to their accounts and uh, for off-chain actors to do the on-chain execution for them. Uh, super excited to get into the details. Uh, and that's my 30 seconds. Nice. Love it. And uh, next up, Dean Agoric Opco. Um, please share with us a little bit about yourself and uh, how we are working on orchestration. Uh, I will. So, um, and, and thank you all, uh, the other guests, for coming. I'm Dean Tribble. Um, I am uh, usually CEO of Agoric and sometimes helping to create this the Agoric orchestration solution. And and so orchestration is how you program this, you know, the all these different assets and, and enable use cases that move and use assets across all these different connected networks. The the you know, I think of skip as you know, essentially providing real orchestration off chain. Agoric is building a solution to provide real orchestration on chain. Um, you know, Socket provides these real smart uh, connectivity that all of us uh, 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 get to rely on for making some of that stuff happen. Um, so, so there's a lot of really good pieces to how we go about programming these chain abstraction solutions, and uh, and that's been really exciting to be working on for the last couple months. So, so uh, I'm you know was here uh, uh, working on this. It it is what the Agoric platform for building large-scale asynchronous programming across uh, a, across a connected, you know, interchain network, what it's always been built for, but the whole chain abstraction realization of, of, of the crypto world of, you know, right, users actually want something. What they want is our assets. They don't care about the chains. They want to be able to seamlessly use all the assets and services. And all of our technologies are coming to, are maturing as the market is realizing they actually want that. And, and that's really exciting. So that's what I'm here for. Oh, that does sound really exciting. Uh, Dean, you said you were sometimes CEO of Agoric. What do you do the other times? Well, you know, I get to squeeze in occasional rounds of, of, of reviewing pull requests or making suggestions. And, and uh, you know, and, and so I do like interspersing that with the business of, of building and managing a team. <clears throat> Well, and we're glad to have you do it. So now after this call, everyone's going to have to start looking for Dean's anonymous GitHub account. Challenge is on. Awesome. All right. Now that the, the gauntlet has been thrown, let's dive in. So, um, you know, orchestration came up in all of our guests, obviously, but, um, you know, orchestration is sort of a unique piece of the whole chain abstraction puzzle. Uh, and a couple of, you know, teams are taking that on from different perspectives. Um, so I wanted to uh, ask Tabasco, who, if you haven't read it already, Particle wrote an awesome report that kind of laid out the chain abstraction landscape and, you know, took a bunch of projects as examples for different approaches, uh, both, you know, at, at different technical uh, styles of approaches to helping people build chain abstraction into their applications. Um, you know, and in that report, they had a whole section on orchestration. Um, so uh, I'd love to hear a bit about, you know, why you guys uh, felt that that was, uh, you know, so significant to create a whole section on that in the report. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a good question. Um, so, you know, I guess for a little bit of background at Particle, uh, we've always kind of been interested in the angle of chain abstraction um, as it relates to kind of like a collaborative stack of technology. So one of the big things that kind of initially got us into the vertical was actually Frontier Research and their Cake framework. And we really liked what they kind of proposed in terms of having this framework of a multiple layered solution in which kind of you have all these lower level primitives and even higher level things that kind of collectively enable this idea of chain abstraction because chain abstraction ultimately is is a um, as a as a higher level goal, we see it as, as a pretty ambitious thing that is at the end of the day, mostly achieved from the kind of collaborative efforts of many. So what we kind of sought out to do with this report that we released um, uh, kind of initially a few weeks ago and updated last week 
is that we wanted to kind of have a categorization of projects, a way that's a little bit easier than, than kind of based on the cake framework, a little bit easier than the cake framework to understand um, what are the, the kind of core players in the chain abstraction ecosystem and how do they interact with one another? How do they actually collectively enable chain abstraction in the context of a given application? So the way that we positioned it was kind of like a collection of what we, in this report, kind of consider to be number one, like comprehensive solutions. So things that aim to solve multiple parts of chain abstraction at the same time. These are things like maybe like a, what we can call a aggregate chains. So maybe Polygon Ag Layer or stuff like that. Um, or like account level chain abstraction, which can kind of solve the coordination part and the unification of, of tooling and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, in addition to this, we kind of have a whole section on uh, what we also believe, believe to be one of the kind of most important parts of chain abstraction, which is orchestration. Um, now we kind of see, or, and we're going to expand more on this uh, actually in a, an article coming later this week or early next week, but we see chain abstraction kind of like uh, almost being a stack of um, different solutions at the account level. Um, and at the chain level, and then at the actual application level. So the chain level, you have things like Polygon Ag Layer, stuff like this, if you consider this chain abstraction. Um, on the account level, you have things like particle networks, so things that coordinate uh, the movement of, of funds across chains and kind of uh, provide users with this unified balance, this unified in interface and address um, uh, for a specific account instance. And then below this, you have orchestration, which is the actual implementation of account abstraction or of chain abstraction on the application level. And um, this is very important because developers need the ability to implement chain abstraction to their application because for example if you just have chain abstraction on the account level where users are uh you know given a universal balance or um having one balance for every chain one address for every chain this is great and you can achieve a lot of the ideals of chain abstraction but uh the actual applications that you're building don't change at all so developers are still significantly limited in terms of what they can do with developers and they're bound by the confines of a given chain or multiple different given chains so orchestration is really simply just the at least the way that we position the report the unlock for this uh this kind of you know multi-chain ecosystem for, for developers in terms of being able to very seamlessly coordinate and orchestrate uh, seamless cross-chain operations. And we see this as being one of the most important parts of actually the uh, like full-scale acquisition of chain abstraction um, being the implementation of chain abstraction on the account level via the means of orchestration, the implementation of chain abstraction on the account level um, by the means of things like universal accounts. And there's uh, other implementations like this, like for example, chain signatures from near. Um, and then you also have orchestration uh, or um, chain abstraction on the chain level, which is um, things like aggregate chains, such as uh, Polygon, Aguilar, and so on. So we see these as all being quite interoperable kind of technologies that collectively will enable a, a true chain abstraction ecosystem. Um, and of course, orchestration is is one of the most important components of this. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so, uh, you know, that really gave us a good view of why orchestration is so important at that sort of user and account level. Uh, Roland, can you speak a bit to why orchestration is important to the sort of like the overall software development process and to the developer experience? Yeah, sure. Happy to. Um, and Tabasco, you know, I, I don't think you and I have ever spoken directly before, but hearing you articulate that, it, it's sort of exactly how I think about this space, too. And so would love to, to spend more time and, and compare notes a little bit here. Um, from, from Agoric's standpoint, uh, what we are building for orchestration really is around focusing on the decentralized contract application layer, right? So, so not, not front ends, not necessarily account abstraction, though uh, we likely will, will go that direction as well, but really uh, extending the Agora chains capabilities to send async messages, coordinate across chains via IBC and other bridging mechanisms to other, other chains that have capabilities and assets that uh, developers wanna reach. Um, and that also extends to allowing developers to create complex business logic that uses those assets and capabilities across chains because that's that's really sort of a, a core piece of this um, and you know I've said this on on spaces before but for a new audience I, I see orchestration really as, being core to building the kind of UX that you want users to have in this multi-chain modular world, um, where you're not really just gonna be siloed to the assets on, on and capabilities on one chain, you're gonna wanna be able to use the full range of new things that come out in the space. Um, and you're gonna want users to be able to do it with, 
without having to sign a transaction every time they move across chains, without having to sort of hold keys on their behalf necessarily. You want the contract to actually be able to do a lot of that capability directly. Um, and so that's really what, what Agoric orchestration is building for. Um, and I, you know, I can spend more time on the, the technical details on, on how we do that and, and um, you know, specifically how some of the features work, but that's really the, the goal there. And I think that as, as Tabasco said, it, it aligns very well with other, other players that um, are doing things off chain, that are doing things in an intense kind of way, that are building front ends that, that coordinate the stuff. Um, there's, there's a lot of pieces of this that have to work well together. And so I'm, I'm really glad that we've been able to have these, these cooperative events where we're, we're trying to push chain abstraction forward from our different perspectives here. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, and, you know, uh, if you could just maybe expand a little bit, like um, maybe what sort of motivated the, uh, the the genesis of the the orchestration API, you know, that's a product that we have coming out, um, upgrade 16, you know, in the in the relatively nearish future will be sort of the, lay the groundwork for that. Um, but I, I guess end goal role, and what do you think is kind of like, um, the, you know, the, the, where where the where the API will really kind of uh, help in this uh, development process for these applications? Yeah, great. Um, and so I see developers building orchestration is really about building, making it easy for users to do cross chain actions. Right, that's really what you're you're trying to enable in your applications. What I see the orchestration API is doing is making it easy for developers to build those things for users. Um, you know, right now if you sort of dive into the depths of how you might do a bunch of um, interchain accounts related things on in Cosmos. It's pretty complicated. You've got, you've got to make a bunch of low level calls. There's a bunch of edge cases, failure modes that you've got to deal with. Um, you know, if you've got an in-flight transaction and then something fails midway on some remote chain, what do you do about that? Those sorts of things cause it to be very difficult to build cross-chain applications right now. And so the, the goal of the orchestration APIs is to make that very straightforward for developers and, and you know, allow you to just get an object that represents a certain chain and call the right functions on that object and not have to necessarily worry about all the details underneath. Um, and so the API will, will start with a core set of, of functionality that will will enable for developers, which likely will will uh, cover a, a large percentage of what people will actually want to build early on anyway. Um, and then we'll continue to expand to uh, take on more ecosystems, take on more capability. Um, and I'm, I'm conscious of time, so I'll, I'll pause there. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's awesome. But no, I actually uh, I have like thirty two seconds left that I need to kill with you before I go over to Barry. So um, clear up something for me, Roland, real quick. Uh, API singular or API plural? Uh, that's purely a marketing question, so I leave that to you. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, all right. You all, you all have witnessed that uh, Roland said I get to decide whether or not it's the orchestration API singular or plural. Awesome, great. On that note, um, <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm just I'm excited about that. Um, anyway, so uh, you know, on that note, you know, we talked a bit about orchestration and why it's so important to uh, chain abstraction and Web three, but we've got a lot of projects who are approaching orchestration from different perspectives, and you know, like Roland touched a little bit about this with how we have the uh, the API and what we're kind of enabling from a developer perspective. Um, but uh, you know, uh, Barry, I would love for you to talk a bit about you know Skip Solution. You guys are uh, like OGs in this interoperability and like sort of modular space. A uh, ton of respect for what you guys have done in the team. So absolutely. Absolutely thrilled to hear your um, perspective on you know what you guys have built and uh, how it kind of solves for orchestration. Yeah, yeah, uh, happy to happy to talk on it. So for those who don't know, Skip's orchestration solution routes about two hundred million dollars of, of volume around uh, different Cosmos chains into Cosmos and out of Cosmos from all the different EVM chains and, and Solana every month. Uh, and we don't, you know, we, we do have a front end, which is IBC Fund, but the vast majority of that is happening uh, actually on other front ends and widgets that people have built in onboarding pages that power, you know, the step to, to get to different Cosmos chains uh, in cross chain wallets that are doing swaps and various things like that. And what we work backwards from is uh, 
okay, you know, IBC is extremely complex. CCTP is extremely complex. Uh, you know, socket and uh, you know, Agoric uh, orchestration solution. These, these things are all extremely complex, and we're all working harder to make them simpler. And we try to say, okay, we. We can't make it simpler for all these use cases, and we, we can't really make it simpler for you know the vast majority of use cases with the existing tools that we have. We need things like Agoric and, and Socket and Particle to kind of come out and, and revolutionize those and make it easier. But what we can do is we can make it really simple to just get any token to any chain from any token, and that's the goal. We want to say, okay, how can we make it so a user can start on some chain with some token, and we can get them to whatever app chain they're trying to go to with whatever token that part, uh, that protocol needs them to have. And from a developer perspective, we want that to be as easy as like calling the Google Maps API, right? You just say, here's where my user is, here's the token they have, and here's the chain that they're going to. And then under the hood, we're doing uh, orchestration or you might call it composition of saying, all right, you know, we can see that to get from uh, you know, Uni on Arbitrum, we need to swap you to USDC, we need on Uniswap there, we need to bridge you over CCTP to Noble and then forward you on to Agoric. But we want you to do that in one transaction. So we deploy these kinds of composer contracts and all of these different chains that understand how to take these individual actions uh, that would otherwise be many user signatures and extremely complex and require them to have wallets and all these chains under the hood and make it just one user interaction. And our composer contracts kind of take care of the rest. On each chain under the hood, it takes this set of operations and says, okay, w which of these can we do locally on this chain? And then we're gonna pass it off to the next composer contract on the next chain. So what we need is we rely on a bunch of different bridges, a lot of you know, really incredible technology that we have not built that allow that kind of token and message passing for us. Um, and then we try to package all of that up into a really simple developer API that somebody can just use on their front end. Uh, and like I said, we work backwards from this goal of we want to make onboarding to app chains super easy because we see that as a huge barrier for the Cosmos ecosystem and more broadly the kind of like modular and sovereign ecosystems actually taking off and growing uh, and getting more liquidity. It's making it really easy to get there from any of these EVM chains or Solana or, or anywhere else, any of the new interesting roll-up ecosystems that are emerging. Uh, and that's where our developer API comes in. Love that, man. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's great to hear uh, that overview of kind of all the work that uh, that Skip has done. And, you know, like, again, it, the great thing about these these uh, different projects is that uh, there are so many different ways that developers can kind of uh, take advantage of a lot of these different tools to put them together and compose them in different ways, which I think is super cool. Um, VC, you mentioned earlier in your introduction uh, something pretty cool that uh, so that Socket does called MOFA. I'd uh, love to hear more about that. Uh, tell us a little bit that and about, uh, you know, kind of how you guys are approaching orchestration. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, to be clear, I think for us, uh, the the thing that we're chasing is chain abstraction and orchestration will play like a large part in it. Uh, and we would love to work with Agoric there. Orchestration will allow developers to kind of like uh, have control over how they want to leverage the sources across rollups, right? So, um, so I come from like, so we've been operating in the EVM landscape for the last two years. Uh, and we've been doing something similar to Skip. Uh, what what Skip's trying to do in the Cosmos land, we've been doing that for the last two years in the EVM land. Um, and it's quite in interesting to see both of these ecosystems evolve uh, and try to scale. What uh, today we've been doing like two point five billion dollars every month of like asset transfers between multiple EVM networks. And a bunch of our learnings have derived from that, right? So Coinbase Wallet, Metamask, Rainbow Wallet, 90% of the EVM wallets in the space today use something like Socket to allow their users to move across chains. And all of our learnings have been from that area, right? So the, the biggest thing that we're trying to do now is get our infra infrastructure to a level such that it scales in an incentive compatible manner. What that means is, okay, you know, like we've been building this API, uh, it gets like super, super hard once you enter this world 
where everyone's launching an L2 and L3. Um, we realized this like six months back um, that, okay, you know, like not just it's a, it's a lot of integration work, but it's also in, not incentive compatible. Plus it sucks, right? Like having to bridge uh, before you do anything on chain uh, that just it does not work. We basically stopped kind of like, you know, talking to people and trying to kind of like, you know, get people to use our in, in, in infrastructure last four months, right? Because it just, it just wasn't working anymore and we could like feel it. And that's why we started working on this thing called MOFA. So MOFA is a modular order flow auction. And what it does is it gives us the ability to automate what we've been doing in a centralized way via the API. It gives us an ability to build a protocol around it and have other people contribute and help us expand this thing for the million or of future, right? Um, so I think MOFA, it, it kind of like, the, the way I think about it, uh, and I'm still trying to kind of like think about a good analogy for it, but MOFA is like a control mechanism that, that sits between the user and the block space. MOFA allows users the ability to control how they use the block space without actually going and interacting with the block space themselves, right? So, and MOFA is able to leverage this off-chain set of actors called transmitters. Users can be like, okay, I need to swap, but this swap will likely be executed in the most efficient manner across 10 different chains. But I don't want to be on 10 different chains, have gas, do bridging, do swapping. I will instead delegate uh, access of my account for a restricted time, for a restricted set of actions to an off-chain entity. And that off-chain entity will maximally, uh, in, a, in the most maximum, ma maximally efficient manner, execute my intention on-chain. Right. And MOFA is like the protocol that will regulate that this is done in a, in a secure fashion and the user request uh, is kind of like held through uh, till the end. Right. Um, hopefully that shares some context. Happy to double click on anything I kind of like mention. Oh, that's uh, that's awesome. I, I, I feel like we could have a, a whole another uh, 30 minutes just talking about uh, MOFA. It's a pretty interesting mechanism. Uh, I did drop a link to the docs page on that um, in the sort of running thread under the chat. So anyone who wants to read a little, little bit more about it, um, feel free to, to check that out. Um, we uh, did run just a few minutes over, but I want to make sure that Roland gets a chance just to kind of high level give us uh, sort of what the the API is a little bit. So um, Roland, feel free to in a, you know in a minute give us just um, anything that you might not have missed on uh, sort of how the API acts as an orchestration solution. Um, if you want to kind of maybe refresh the key point from earlier. Yeah, sure. So just just to highlight Agoric schedule here. Um, uh, you mentioned the next upgrade, upgrade 16. Um, that will include the platform upgrades that make orchestration possible. So um, that's sort of allowing Agoric contracts to speak to IBC and 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 um, orchestrate cross chain. The orchestration APIs will come after that. So uh, we're still targeting late June, I think, for the the overall orchestration APIs, uh, the first release there, and that will be focused on connecting to Cosmos chains, creating interchain accounts so that you can manage a, an account cross chain, um, handling messages with IBC hooks, handling staking operations, um, any capabilities allowed by those those cross chain accounts. So for example, uh, Osmosis effectively allows you to do almost anything on chain via an ICA. So, you know, controlling an Osmosis account and doing interesting trading there. Uh, we'll be speaking to other core Cosmos chains like DYDX to allow, get get their additional allowances up as well. And so we expect lots of Agoric contracts uh, to be able to be launched um, orchestrating across the cosmos very very soon after that. Um, it's worth noting we you know it is possible once upgrade sixteen it is goes out it is possible to build an orchestration contract. It will just be you'll be working with lower level structures, but that's that's quite all right. Um, so really excited for that. And then uh, beyond that, the orchestration APIs will expand to touch the Ethereum ecosystems and L2s, uh, Solana, and and beyond. 
Amazing. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be super exciting. So be sure to, uh, you know, keep your ears out for more information as we get closer to those APIs coming on chain. I mean, Orchestration Core is already enabling some partners to uh, orchestrate some of the features that they've got going on under the hood. And we'll be, uh, you know, super excited to start revealing more about what's been going on on that note, uh, you know, as the as the future comes along. Um, so thank you, everyone, for chatting with us, um, you know, in the last 30 seconds um, as we say goodbye. Uh, uh, feel free to uh, just give a quick shout out to what you have coming up next for your project. Um, so uh, just let us know, uh, VC, what should we keep an eye out for from Socket in, you know, the next couple months? I think dogs, dogs, dogs. Uh, that's that's the first thing we are going to ship. And then the core infrastructure. So upgrading all the 500 plus applications building on Socket today to this new chain, chain attracted world. Super excited. All right. Love that. Everyone loves good docs. Um, Barry, what's coming up next for Skip? What should we get excited about? We are starting to actually integrate our on-chain products with our off-chain products in ways where we're going to be able to allow app chains to kind of become their own sovereign bridges and get kind of instant distribution for those things into all of the wallets and the onboarding pages and things that we support. So we're going to have this really cool ability for chains to kind of launch permissionless bridges to all these new rollups and be like Bitcoin L2s and L3s as they're coming out. So it uh, should be really exciting for kind of long range Cosmos interop. Oh, that's awesome. I, like I wasn't ready for such a, a bomb to drop. I, like I was so interested in paying attention, Barry, that I did not even write it down to tweet it into my thread. <laughs> so if you want to hear what uh, Skip's got coming up, you're going to have to listen to the recording again, because that was way too interesting for me to uh, not focus on. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, last but not least, uh, since Roland already uh, gave us a preview of our timeline for the orchestration API, uh, Tabasco, what's coming up next from Particle in the next couple of months that people should be excited about? Yeah, so we actually just launched our testnet last week, uh, at least the first phase of our testnet. Um, over the coming weeks, we're going to be launching the second phase of our testnet alongside some of our SDKs and kind of our developer tooling to start, you know, uh, getting developers working with um, some of our SDKs to enable um, universal accounts across the ecosystem. Um, then hopefully moving into really the next month or two, we're going to gear up for the launch of our first mainnet. Um, and of course, in addition to all this, we have a lot of really cool content and kind of research along the way. Um, including, like I mentioned, something coming this Friday regarding the uh, implementation of account-based chain abstraction alongside orchestration solutions. So we're, we're quite excited to start publishing that. I'll dive really deep into Agoric, uh, the orchestration API. Um, we're building in a kind of a few other uh, related solutions. So um, a lot of really cool stuff from our side, from the content side, and as well as the release of kind of our, our um, uh, chain abstraction solutions that we've been building uh, here for the past few months. Amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for listening in. Thank you to all the speakers for taking part. Appreciate it uh, for everyone uh, lending us your time to go over orchestration and how it's going to help Web3 realize chain abstraction, which we all know is the key to what is that? Mass adoption. That's right. Stay tuned for more from Agoric, from Socket, from Skip, and from Particle. Follow us all on social media and see you all around the conference circuit this summer. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.